Jesus and his disciples came to the other side of the sea, to the territory of the Gerasenes. When he got out of the boat, at once a man from the tombs, who had an unclean spirit, met him. The man had been dwelling among the tombs, and no one could restrain him any longer, even with a chain. In fact, he had frequently been bound with shackles and chains, but the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles smashed. And no one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day, among the tombs and on the hillsides, he was always crying out and bruising himself with the stones. Catching sight of Jesus from a distance, he ran up and prostrated himself before him, cried out in a loud voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure, adjure you by God, do not turn from me. He had been saying to him, Unclean spirit, come out of the men. He asked him, What is your name? He replied, Legion is my name. There are many of us. And he pleaded earnestly with him not to drive them away from that territory. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there on the hillside, and they pleaded with him, Send us into the swine, let us enter them. And he let them, and the unclean spirits came out and entered the swine. The herd of about two thousand rushed down a steep bank into the sea, where they were drawn. The swine herds ran away and reported the incidents in the town and throughout the countryside. And people came out to see what had happened. As they approached Jesus, they caught sight of a man who had been possessed by legion, sitting there clothed and in his right mind. And they were seized with fear. Those who witnessed the incident explained to them what had happened to the possessed men and to the swine. Then they began to beg him to leave their district as he was getting into the boat. The man who has been possessed pleaded to remain with him, but Jesus would not permit him, but told him instead, Go home to your family and announce to them all that the Lord in his pity has done for you. Then the man went off and began to proclaim in the Decapolis what Jesus had done for him, and all were amazed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today on this Gospel, I know it's a long Gospel and a long reflection, and we can get many teachings from this Gospel, but I want to concentrate on two, two teachings that we can get from this gospel. The first one is that we see this person who is in the tombs is away from the civilization, is away from the rest of the people, and he harms himself because he is possessed with unclean spirits. How can we apply this to ourselves? We can apply this to ourselves when we are in sin, because sin harmed us. It generated us pain, and it separated us from God and from the rest of the people. And that's why we see this man in the tombs, and he's harming himself. We too, we harm ourselves. Even though we say, I am free to do this, I am free to do that. It's my body. I can do with my body whatever I want. I can drink as much as I want. I can do drugs all I want. I'm free to do it because it's my body. I can have an abortion because it's my body. No one is going to tell me what to do. I am the owner of my body and I choose whether to do one thing 
or the other. But we don't realize that we are harming ourselves. And that's not really freedom, because freedom is to do good for us, not to destroy us. So when we are submit to sin, we tend to harm ourselves, to harm our relation that we have with our family or with the people that are close to us. We harm ourselves, we harm them, and we break our relation. We lose the state of grace when we commit a sin. And then the second thing that we see in this gospel is that this man requests Jesus to follow him. He said, I want the man who had been possessed plead to remain with him. But Jesus told him, go home to your family and announce to them all that the Lord in his pity has done for you. This also we can understand this as it's not that because Jesus didn't want him to be with him, but because he had a different task, a different vocation. That's why he told them, you have to go to your family and tell them what I have done in your life. Many of us too. Some of us are called to the priesthood life, to the religious life. Others are called to matrimony. And there you have to preach. You have to let them know what the Lord has done within you, within your family, within your life. There in your family, you ha have this great task there to also be an evangelizer. The priest, the religious person, brother or sister, they have a task, but you also have a task. And our task is to preach. Our responsibility as Christians is to teach, to preach the gospel. Some in the church, others in your own family. There you have to preach what the Lord has done with you. So let us ask God to have mercy on us and let us not harm ourselves with the sin and recognize the grace of God. Recognize that God wants to set us free from sin.